Hello, Math Aid students. This is Mrs. Strickler on Monday morning. I hope you've had a wonderful spring break. Had a break. I know there's been some rain, but I'm sure that you've all been very creative in finding ways to use your time and enjoy your family. And I hope that you had a great Easter celebration yesterday. We did. Uh, we have much to celebrate. But now it's Monday morning, so it's time to get back to work. And we're going to have one lesson today. It's lesson 11.7, and we're going to get to work. So I'm now going to say a prayer. Father in heaven, we just thank you so much that you're faithful and you're good. I just thank you uh, and praise you for the resurrection of Jesus. This is why we pray in your name, and what gives our prayers power um, is because Jesus rose from the dead and we are so grateful for that and I pray for all of my students that they would learn well they would focus they would really be able to take in this information and master it and do excellent on their chapter 11 test and I pray that you'd strengthen me and help me right now to be the very best teacher I can be using words the best words that will help them to learn in Jesus name amen Okay, so now we're going to start our lesson and our lecture, and I'm going to sit down and you won't see me anymore. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. I'm going to put the projector on, and we're going to get started. <clears throat> this is the last lesson in new lesson in Chapter 11. So on Wednesday, we will have a chapter review, and then you will have a test. So um, let's get started. Uh, before break, I don't know if you remember that, uh, that we worked on, whoops, we worked on <clears throat> slope. So let's talk about that for just a second to refresh our memory. I hope you have graph paper. That makes graphing the easiest, and we're going to do a lot of graphing today. So when we talk about slope, that is the rise over the run. It's the slant in a line. So if I had a graph and I have a line like this, the slope would be represented by going up or down over left or right. So this little part here, whoops, this would be the rise, and this would be the run. I don't know if you can read that. So going up or down, like this, over left to right. Now, I say up or down because you can also go down to find your slope. Let's look at that for a minute. If you had a point here and you had a point here and you wanted to find the slope going down, you could go down and then left. And that would give you the same result because it's all part of the same line. It's just that going down would give you a negative slope. And going left would also give you a negative slope slope. And what's negative over negative? Think about that. It's a positive. So it do, if we went up and right, that's positive. Going up is positive, right is positive. So you would have a positive slope. Going down is negative and left is negative. So a negative over a negative would also give you a positive slope. So anyway, I hope that refreshes your memory a little bit. And we had this formula here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that also represents the change in y over the change in x. OK. So we're going to use the slope, and we're going to use it in an equation. And this is the best thing ever. Let me just tell you, what we're learning today is going to make graphing so much easier. I just love this. Because 
using points can be hard and it can take a long time. Using the x-intercept and the y-intercept, we did that. Uh, making a table, we did that. This is the third method for graphing and this is the easiest and the best. So, this is called the slope intercept form. Okay. And this equation is a formula, looks like this. Y equals MX plus B. Now some of you, if you were in my class last year, or if you had a math curriculum last year that, was, that did this, you may have been exposed to this before. But for some of you, this is new. All right, this is going to make your life so much better. The M represents our slope. And this is, by the way, an equation of a line. All right, and the B, that's a B, not a six, that represents the y-intercept. Now, we already talked about that before, this before, but um, this is the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, okay? All right, so knowing that, we're going to practice first identifying the slope and the y-intercept. So we're going to work with this formula. So here's number one. Find the slope and y-intercept of the equation. Okay, and here's A. Y equals 4x plus 2. So all we have to do is identify the slope and the y-intercept. This is the very beginning. This should be nice and easy because you have to be able to do that in order to use this equation effectively for graphing. So the slope, very simply, is 4, and the y-intercept is 2. That's the answer. That's it. All right, so and a lot of the time, that's just how easy it is. A lot of the time you're going to have a positive slope right there. Now, what happens if you have something like this? Y equals X minus 3. All right, well to find my slope, it is the number in front of the X. So what number is right there? There is nothing there. That's because there's only one X, so it's an invisible 1. So my slope is 1. And the y-intercept is the number by itself here. Now be careful, you have to include the negative there. So it would be negative 3. Okay, let's do C. Negative 4x plus 2y equals 16. All right, this time we don't have the y written by itself. We have x, the x term, then we have y, and on the other side we have <clears throat> the number by itself. It's called the constant. Now, this form where you have x, then y, the equals, and then you have uh, this, the number by itself, that is called standard form. You'll learn more about that in Algebra 1. But often, equations are written in this form. So if we're given an equation like this, we need to change it. Johnny. We need to change it 
to um, y intercept. So I'm going to get y by itself. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 4x to both sides, and then I have 2y equals 4x plus 16. So to get y by itself, I first moved the x term. Now, I don't have y alone. I have a 2 here, so I have to get rid of that 2. How is the 2 related to the x? I mean the y, I'm sorry. They're next to each other, so they're multiplied. So I do the opposite. I divide by 2. And I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do the same thing to every term. So I just looked at that and said, oh, 2 times y. I want to get rid of that 2. I'm going to divide everything by 2. And I need to do it to each term. Make sure you divide by every term. So these cancel. And I now have y by itself, which is my goal. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. So now I have my equation in the y-intercept form. So I can identify the slope. The slope is 2. And the y-intercept is 8. Okay. So now I'm going to give you some OIOs practicing this. That's the first thing we're going to do. So if the directions are the same, and I want you to write these down, and I will pause. You can pause. I'll take a break for just a moment. You can pause the video and do those three. Find the slope and y intercept. Okay, so go ahead and do those and we'll come back in just a minute. do these with you. I hope you had some success. It's not too hard. I'm going to change colors here for just a minute. How about orange? Okay, so number one, the equation is already in y-intercept form. So my slope is going to be 6 and the y-intercept is going to be 1. Alright, number two, the slope here is going to be one fourth. I can have a fraction. Actually, slope is a fraction, right? It's always rise over run. Sometimes it's a whole number, sometimes it's actually a fraction. Okay, well, do I have a y intercept? Nothing is there. If nothing is there, the equation crosses the y axis at zero. So my y-intercept would be 0. There's no term there for b. Okay, and looking at number 3, I need to get y by itself. So I want to first get rid of this term, the negative 2x. So I'm going to add the 2x to both sides. So I get 3y equals 2x plus 6. Alright, now I still have a 3y here, so I want to get rid of that 3, and I'm going to divide all terms by 3. So I end up with y equals 2 thirds x, and then when I reduce 6 over 3, I get 2. Now my equation is in y-intercept form. So my slope, I can identify as 2 thirds, and the y-intercept is Two. Okay, so now let's go back to our other color and continue learning. Number two, we're going to graph 
using y equals mx plus b. And over to the right here, the first thing I'm going to do is write my steps. So I'm going to do that first. So number one is plot the y-intercept. I'm just going to represent that with int there. Plot the y-intercept. Identify the slope. Number three, use the slope to find another point. And the fourth thing is to draw the line, the fourth step. Now remember, I say this every time, but I mean it. If I'm going too fast, Pause the video, catch up, rewind, use it however it will benefit you. All right, so those are my steps. So here's my problem. It's y equals 1 half x plus 3. So I'm going to draw my graph. Love having graph paper. Keeps my lines nice and straight. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I plot the y-intercept. Now I know by looking at my equation that y-intercept is 3. Now what does that mean? That means that my line is going to cross the y-intercept, which is right here, at this point, 3. Well, what point is that? Well, it's on the y-axis, so the x value would be 0 and y is 3. So when we say the y-intercept is 3, that means we're looking at this point where x is 0 and y is 3. Okay, so that's first. I plot that point. Now identify the slope. The slope here is 1 half. So if the slope is 1 half, that means the rise over the run is 1 half. And that means that I'm going to go up 1 and right 2. So you can go ahead and write that down. Both are positive. So I go up 1 and right 2. So what I do is I put my pen right here on the y-intercept. And I use my slope from there. I hope you're really listening right now. So from this point, I'm going to go up 1. And then I go right 2. Up 1, right 2. And I plot my second point. See, the slope tells me what the slant is exactly. So from one point for the another, to another, the amount of the slant is the slope. So I can go from any point on the line to another point, and my slope will be 1 over 2. And then the last thing I do is draw my line. Okay, let's do another one. This is number 3 graph y equals negative 3x minus 2. Alright, so I'm going to put my graph here. Okay, so I'm going to identify my slope. That is negative 3, and my y-intercept is negative 2. So let's talk about those some more. The point uh, where it crosses the y-intercept, uh, the y-axis, is 0, negative 2. That's actually my point. And the slope, negative 3, means negative 3 over 1, 
all whole numbers can be a fraction over 1, and that tells me to go down 3 and right 1. The 3 is negative. Not going to go up. I'm going to go down. But the 1 that I put underneath, that's positive. So I'm going to go right 1. Okay, I'm going to change colors for this. So from here, the first step is to uh, plot the y-intercept. So that's negative 2 down here, 0, negative 2, and my slope is, oh, I need a little bit longer here. I'm going to draw this a little longer. Sorry about that. Just a second. Okay. Okay, so from here, my slope is down 3, right 1. So from this point, I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3. Down 3 and right 1. That's my slope. And I plot my second point right there. So those are my two points, and then I draw my line, just like that. And that's how we graph using y-intercept. Okay, I'm going to give you three OIOs and then we'll come back and go over those in just a few minutes. So we're going to graph and here is number one y equals 2x plus 5 number two is y equals 7x and number 3 negative x plus y equals 6. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple hints. What is my y-intercept there when there's no number? It's at 0, 0. Okay? That's like if nothing is there, that's like having plus 0. And look at this one. Is y by itself? No. So I have to move that negative x term. Okay, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back in just a few minutes and go over these. Okay, I hope you had some success with those. So let's try these. One, two, three, four, five, six, to go up seven for this one. Okay, so what's my slope? My slope which I told you earlier represents m, they just use an m, is 2, and my y-intercept is at 5, which is 0, 5. And a slope of 2 means up, 2, right, 1. Okay, so I'm going to change colors, got that all set up. Check your work on that. Check your y-intercept and your slope. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing I do is plot the y-intercept. Don't go left or right. I just go straight up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? And from that point, put your pencil there. You go up 2, 1, 2, and right 1. And then I plot my second point right there. And I draw my line. So there it is. Okay, let's do number two. All right, I'm going to move number 
three over a little. So we have lots of room. This is a tall and skinny one also. Okay, so let's talk about the slope. The slope is seven, which means seven over one, and that means up seven, right one. And my y-intercept, I don't have anything, so it's at zero, zero. Okay, so now let's actually graph it. So the first thing I do is I plot, whoops, plot my y-intercept here. So then I'm going to go up seven, right one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like that. So that's my seven going up and then right one. And there's my second point. That's where it is. And so when I have any two points, I can draw a line and there we go. Okay, go ahead and check that. And I'm going to do number three. I'll rewrite it over here. Number three, negative x plus y equals six. So I need to move that negative x so that I can have x, uh, y by itself. So I'm going to add x to both sides, and I get y equals x plus 6. Now I'm going to identify the slope. My slope is 1, which means 1 over 1. So I'm going to go up 1, right 1. 1. And my y-intercept is at 0, 6. Another tall graph. Okay. I hope your lines are straighter than mine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh, 7. Okay. some dashes on the rest of the graph. Okay, so my y-intercept is 0, 6, so I don't go right or left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right here, and I'm going to go from there, I'm going to go up 1, right 1. So there's my second point, and there's my line. It doesn't have very, it's not very steep, but it's high up on the graph. Okay, now what would that math class be like if we didn't have a word problem? So we're going to do that. Here is number four. Let's come back here, number four. Okay, and I am going to read this out loud. And it says, <clears throat> you are at the base of a trail on Mount Rainier in Washington. The temperature, so let's write down our information, the temperature is 50.9 degrees. The temperature changes at a rate of negative 0 0.005 feet per foot of elevation. as you hike up. Okay. And the question is, what is the temperature one thousand feet above the base. Okay, if you're behind on writing this down, go ahead and um, write that down. You can pause the video. Okay, I wonder if any of you have been hiking at Mount Rainier. 
We'll might try to find a picture of that in just a minute. Okay, what does this mean? It means that when you start your hike at the base, this is at the base, the temperature is about 51 degrees. So everybody's got a nice warm jacket on, maybe a couple layers, so that as you build up some uh, uh, energy that you're getting warm, you can take off one coat, we'll see. Okay, so that rate means that for every foot you go up, uh, go up, the temperature drops just a little bit, a very little bit. So that's like half of a half of a thousandth of a degree, but it's only for a foot per foot. Okay. So what is the temperature above the base? Well. We need to uh, write an equation, so we're going to do that. We're going to write, talk about the temperature as you're hiking. So the temperature is going to be um, your initial temperature. So if you're standing at the base, that's where we started right and then as you go up you have to add the rate because you're changing where you're going so you're going to add the rate of the temperature change multiplied by the increase in elevation Okay, so <clears throat> what that means is that every time you go up a foot, you're going to have to multiply that by the, temp the loss in temperature, the rate of change, and add that in. Because obviously, when you start at the base and you go up, what happens to the temperature on the mountain? It goes down, and that's reflected in my rate of change here, okay? So, we want to find out um, what is the temperature a thousand feet above the base. So I've got, I'm trying to find that. So my initial temperature um, is 50 degrees. 0.9 plus my rate negative 0 0.005 times x whatever my increase in elevation is all right so this is in feet okay now let's talk about this in terms of the lesson we've been looking at y equals mx plus b so I want to put my rate, my rate is the same as the slope. So I'm going to change the order here. Okay. And this is...